Hello, hello. Here we go again. So just going to finish up with anthropometrics and a couple of important points about user population, um, reminding you a little bit about those percentile ranges and then on to range of sizes versus adjustability, as well as clearance, reach and adjustability. So some of these types of things down there. All right. So quick reminder remember percentile ranges if you lined up collected all that data remember the different types of data and how to collect it if you collected all that data of people of a class you'd get this you get a bulk of people that are right inside the middle a couple of people that are a little bit shorter a couple of people that are a little bit taller but you're going to get a lot of people that fit right in the middle this is that 50th percentile range this is that fifth percentile and that's that 95th so a graph looks something like this yeah, so where you've got a lot of those people right inside the middle, and then there's a few people on the inside that 95th, and then a few people that are inside the fifth. Okay, so just remember that as you're as we're talking about um, this anthropometrics, because again, anthropometrics is that science and that data collection of uh, humans and the relationship to objects, dynamic, st static primary, secondary, all right? So let's have a look back at something else to talking about. Um, oh, this was a little bit about the user range, right? Remember that the 50th percentile isn't always an accurate measurement of um, an average person because different factors could change, right? So maybe, for example, um, this is an average height, but the width of the person is different. Yeah, when somebody's pregnant, they they the way that their measurements change is very different. So there's no exact fiftieth; they're just kind of estimating and giving it an average. So just remember that sometimes there's questions. Just know that there is no perfect fiftieth percentile. Right? Another important point too is about the user populations, the user groups. So. Um, there are different types of people for different data. You can't just say, all right, let's get, let's get uh, a whole bunch of um, men from England and then we're going to all design chairs around these men and their 50th percentile. You've got to think of a lot of other user groups that, are with, that can use products. So a good example is uh, young children. Have you ever noticed, you know, uh, when we've been down in elementary school, um, there's small chairs or small tables or there's specific types of desks for students. So that's because people have collected that anthropometric data for children and then they've designed accordingly. So there's a different type of user group for a different type of data and for different types of designs. So you noticed, I'm sure you guys have probably played with Lego Duplo or maybe with Lego, but you notice how the size is bigger than the Lego, the typical Lego brick. So remember when you talked about not just measurements, but physical ability, tactile strength, um, and those capabilities. So a small child isn't, doesn't have the dexterity in their fingers to be able to play with or manipulate the small Lego bricks, but they can with the large ones. So that's why they're understanding, Lego understood their user group. Okay, so here's a quick question. I believe this question is on the quiz. So press pause, have a look, and answer. Remember, this is related to how do you design based on those percentile ranges. Okay. All right, here we go again. So we talked about this um, different data collection um, and also the user population. So back to that. Remember that user groups, there are different criteria or characteristics, but just so you understand, there is a difference between a target market and a user population. So the user population is a group of people that are potential users of a product. So essentially, anybody that interacts with the product, they assemble it, they purchase it, they repair it, there's anything that, that um, that's related to their interaction with that project. It's a very wide product, it's a very wide population. But target market is usually specific to somebody who purchases or the customer of that product. So it can be a little bit different, okay? So that's related to advertising. This is more related to the use. So just remember that 
as we're we're going through. Um, so that's about user population. So now jumping down to on that range of sizes versus adjustability. If you remember at the beginning, I talked about how people use these to to create um, products, right? So there's the the door handle, there's the shirts, there's the chairs, there's walkways. So that's how these people use anthropometrics in order to design. So there is a difference between range of sizes versus adjustability. So by using um, these anthropometric data, you can have small, medium, large. Same thing for Coca-Cola's small, medium, large, right? And the reason why is because this allows to a specific sector or a specific user group. So you want to give them those range of sizes as opposed to adjustability where maybe you can have the one size fits all, maybe things can move and be adjusted and it depends on the type of product and what type of percentile range or who is going to be using it. So for example, it's tricky to have a one size fits all shirt, but a one size fits all hat because there may not be as much of a degree in change that makes a bit of a difference. Okay, so here's flipping through. There's a couple of more examples just so you can see the difference between that range of size and adjustability related to the different products. Okay, so to add into with addition to adjustability, there is clearance and reach. So these are important because it's thinking about as you're designing, you're thinking about how to design based on that reach, how much clearance is there and thing has and if it's adjustable or not. So, for example, when they looked at this chair, this chair is adjustable. These chairs are adjustable. So but it also considers reach in some way. So how far across does somebody need to get? How how low do they need to go to get something adjustable? The same thing with the car seats. So how do these things move and clearance? So if things go over or around or you don't bump into them. OK, so examples drawers that can be pushed in and out underneath of the bed um, wheels that allow to the that allow um, hangers to be able to move around but also reach inside so how far you get to you need to get to get particular items um, a couple of other ones as well too. keep going adjustable hats you've seen these things before all right here's a few more examples Okay, so it's understanding how to use those factors of clearance, reach, adjustability, range of sizes. Okay, so your task on your on the form is about finding design contexts for clearance, reach, and adjustability, and saying why that is a priority in those specific designs. I think the definitions are pretty clear what clearance is, what reach is, and what adjustability is. But remember that it's those three specific things. Okay? So actually, that's it for human factors and ergonomics. So we've gone, to remind you again, we've gone about over static versus dynamic data, also called structural and functional, primary data versus secondary data, percentiles, percentile ranges, range of sizes, adjustability, clearance, reach, and adjustability, and then how to collect it, what's, how it's reliable, how it's not, how user populations change, and then how you can use percentile ranges for different products, as well as reach, uh, clearance, and adjustability. Okay, so next up, um, that's the anthropometrics. Next up is psychological factors and physiological factors. Okay, so remember to please complete that form and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.